Hey guys, good morning. I'm Monique Bradley. Good morning, I'm Pete Ward. Welcome to the Dog and Pony Show podcast slash live stream video. Absolutely. <laughs> However yes, you're watching or, or taking in this information, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yep. We are, um, I want to say experts, but let's just say we muck around in digital. We How do. Is it? And um, we, we both um, specialise in different areas, helping business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers and all sorts of people who are ready to grow their impact in the digital world. That's what we do through mentoring, coaching and helping people with their online solutions. And today is a big topic because we've had so many people asking us and contacting us recently about how do I build an online course? Should I build an online course? I need to make money somehow. What should I do? It's a, it's a good question, Pete. Extremely good question. It's um, probably one of the ones we've had the most, as Monique said. It springs to mind straight away. Oh, I could sell an online course. And um, unfortunately, you and 20 million other people right at the moment. But it's still what we're going to do today is talk about, you know, let's look at this idea and see whether you really do have something you can you can offer and how to how to make that work. And as usual, we have a nice little three-step uh, process that we're going to work through today. That's that right. Going it's to nice about. and simple. Um, why this is such a good topic for you guys, and I, I continue to learn, even though I'm doing this for clients, I continue to learn because I get to work with Pete. And Pete actually pioneered online learning in New Zealand. So he ran um, a program through an institute, educational institute, and got that up and running. Pete, do you want to tell everybody really quickly? Because that's quickly. pretty awesome. It's quite cool, yes. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so I retrained as an adult uh, learner, which is called Second Chance Learner. So I was about um, 27 uh, when I retrained into IT. I did a, a qualification in, in IT at uh, Polytech. And then I worked my way up through the education sector. So I started in a school as a network administrator, uh, her networking computers together, rolling out software, supporting teachers, uh, doing training, and worked my way up all the way back into another tertiary institute uh, where I actually pioneered online learning in New Zealand uh, through our virtual learning centre, which is the first virtual learning centre in New Zealand as we rolled out our program uh, to 47 sites, and I trained 12, over 12,000 students. Uh, not personally, obviously, uh, <laughs> through my program that we did together. Um, there was quite a few people involved. There's, you know, some uh, names I can throw around, but um, thank you to all of those people who were involved. But we we gave other adults a second chance learner opportunity in an IT qualification as well. So I got to pay it back. So you can teach an old dog new tricks. I'm uh, proof of that. And then uh, once you've learnt those. Uh, new skills in life, you can put them to work uh, in in growing your own business. So that's where we are today. We're sure growing can. online businesses for people, helping them, uh, especially at the moment uh, with the yeah. the uh, what I want to call it a disaster. <laughs> I don't Challenge. want to call, I don't want to call it a disaster. It's, it's some of the handling of it has been maybe a disaster. That's not what we're talking about today, though. We're talking about online learning and whether you should be looking at um, taking that knowledge you have and turning it into an online course. Awesome. So today we're going to cover a few different things. We're going to talk about the platforms that you should be using. We're going to talk about content structure as well, uh, which is kind of my area. So my area is uh, film and television. So I'm all in. I have a big background in education as well. I had my own performing arts school and I had to create curriculums and do a whole lot of work within the educational arena. Um, and the other thing we're going to talk about today, Pete? Content. Is, oh, content. No, I said that one. There's three structure. things, structure Pla and platform, the platform. structure, content. There you go, Pete. Let's start with the platform first because a lot of people ask us, how should I roll out my program? Should I just put everybody in a private Facebook group and just do live videos? Well, you could do that if you want. But if you are really wanting to grow that globally, you need to really start to think about the platform you're going to use for the delivery of that content. Pete, you talk about that because that's your your domain. Okay, so there's several ways to do it. So the first thing you got to think about or the question you ask is, well, do I need a learning management system, which is what they're called LMS, learning management system, uh, which keeps everything in control, or can I just put up a blog site, like maybe a, a simple WordPress site and put a membership plugin in there and, um, and just put all the members into a group and let them access my blogs? Well, that 
actually could be a very, very valid way to get going. We, we started somebody off doing that exact thing and literally um, it's, it's your own little custom learning management system, I guess, in a way. So look, if that's the easiest way to get going, then yes, do that. Uh, look at other ways of hosting. So do you self-host? Do you get it hosted? So something like Kajibi. Is Kajabi. It? Kajabi. I don't actually personally use it. Um, Teachable, um, uh, Udemy. Udemy or Udemy. Yeah, there's lots of different ones out there. Goodness, you can pay you know, $49 or you can pay $499. Depends on, on what your needs are. So you've really got to look at your needs. So to determine your platform, look at your needs and look at the needs of your learners where are they going to access it? How are they going to do it? Uh, if you, oh, we actually built um, uh, for uh, Rachel Thompson, the smarter mortgage lady. We she actually has a little yoga site you know, yeah. where you can log in there, become a member, and I will share learn. that link. Yeah, good. And I'll, I'll put that in there soon as well. Uh, yeah, and um, learn yoga through her videos. So you can do it that way. Uh, you can do. Yeah, there's so many different ways. So you've got to look at the needs of your of your learners and and your own needs and your budget. Think Absolutely. about your budget. Work your budget through to make sure that you can afford it. But yes, yes, the answer is yes. Do it. Just start simple. Keep it simple. Uh, kiss. Yeah. Keep it. I know. I'm not going to say that. The, the, keep it simple. Stupid. Oh, but I learned it, to was it. keep it yeah. short and simple. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, morning, Gina. Good to see you on the live stream. We yeah. are talking about online education and simple ways that you can get started uh, from taking your knowledge and your expertise and transferring that into an online program format. One lady I was talking to about online learning yesterday, uh, one of the things that was really simple for her to do was to in fact um, invite people to a Zoom session. So she would send out a Zoom link as part, because it's a free course, as part of the learning. She had um, some subjects in mind of what she wanted to discuss over the four weeks. Uh, of the program and then basically sent out a Zoom link so only people with that link could then uh, join that conversation and be part of that educational. It is it is a bit more of a challenge if you're wanting to do something that simple with trying to monetize that. So it's really important if you are wanting to turn, use your education as a lead generator for your business to then make sure at the end or sometime during your Zoom call that you say, by the way, um, if you want to take your learning to the next level and work one-on-one -on -one with me, particularly if you're a coach or a mentor, uh, it's really important to make sure that you make that call to action because a lot of people end up missing missing out on their valuable sales opportunity and they end up giving out all of that information without being able to monetize it. So if you are looking at that opportunity of monetizing your knowledge, um, Pre-recording content and putting it into a website and adding a subscription is one option, which is what Pete's going to show you very shortly. Um, this is Rachel Thompson, who's also the Smarter Mortgage Lady, who is also uh, a yoga practitioner and qualified teacher. She trained in India and she wanted to be able to capture her knowledge and expertise. And you can actually subscribe to the site and get specific uh, yoga, uh, what are they called, practices? I think that's what they're called, uh, routines that help with different things, including if you're stuck at a desk uh, like we are or pretty much all day, there are routines you can do in your desk. Uh, you can see here, Pete's showing you this is the back end of or where you sign up for the subscription. It's just $12.99 a month. And um, as she gets people signing up to that, she'll add more and more content to keep people happy. But right, right now, there's things to do with strength, there's things to do with um, calming your nervous system and um, more meditative practices through to increasing your flexibility, increasing your cardiovascular fitness and as I said even routines that are designed for you to do at your office at work. Uh, yeah. Pete, anything you want to talk about when you, because you were you were instrumental in creating that course for her. Um, just, yep, again, just keep it simple. So we videoed that in our lounge and you know, that's and it's great it looks fantastic you know lighting was good the you know camera was good so think about those kind of things think about this the quality that's kind of more getting on to the third but we're still talking about we've got our three points we've got platform structure and content so we're talking about platform at the moment that's a very nice simple all it is is a membership plugin in a wordpress site so and, and woocommerce cart to take the payment that's yep. all it is and i think it has a subscription 
payments so you pay monthly so yep so finally if you want to do it just summing that up you've got self-hosted options which is what that is because you've created the content and you've got it on your own platform or there are platforms you can use to host your content so those are sites like Udemy um Oh, I can't even remember the other names, but there's a whole bunch of... Ed- oh, Teachable is another one. And that's where you put your content into their site and then you don't have to worry about a platform. So if you don't have a, a website built or anything like that, they will host it for you. But just be mindful, you'll have to pay a monthly fee for that hosting and you will also have to pay a portion of every course that is sold on that platform back to the platform. So, um, but Pete's just going to show you very quickly. This is what we use in WordPress to build online courses and it's really good. Even somebody who's not technically minded like me can use this, it's brilliant. So yep, we use this Learn Dash. We've got this across our own site as well as into other client sites and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so learndash.com, it's a plugin into uh, a WordPress site and look, it's absolutely fantastic. I'll, um, I'll show you what we've got here. Okay, so this is our site and we will share this as well. This is members.yourfixcommunications.com, which is where we do all of our uh, learning. And you'll see here, we've got our members portal. So um, it is a separate site to your, your main corporate uh, website. That means you can do different things with different plugins and you don't have to worry about your, your main site. So you can see, obviously, here, we've got two courses at the moment we're working on. You can do a LinkedIn profile tips download. That's actually a free download in it fact sure they're both is. free we're working on our courses in the background um, we'll be releasing them and we will have our linkedin yeah course the first, done next tutorials yeah coming up i believe that that's launching very soon uh we've got all the material ready and we're about to launch an online training so you can do that live with us or you can do it on demand after the broadcast so the content's already and that really takes me to the next point i guess which is about structure is that our next topic yeah absolutely awesome structure is really important i am what's classified as a non-linear thinker that's mean that means that my thoughts are actually really scattered um and that's when they talk about out of the box thinking <laughs> I don't even touch the side of the box. I'm not in the box. I'm just floating around somewhere on the outside. So my thought pattern is not sequential. Whereas Pete, you think like a computer. Is that right? Pretty much. Pretty much linear. So yeah. Just what that means in human speak is that Pete's brain naturally um, thinks in steps, in logical steps, whereas mine doesn't. Uh, so Pete's brain works on the format, and, which is similar to computer programming, if this, then that, which means if you do one thing, another action is going to occur. And his job has always been with computing is to, um, and working with clients on courses, is to go, cool, if we do this step, what's the next progression of learning? And when you're creating an online course, it's really, really important to have a progression of learning that's easy to follow. So whether you're linear like Pete or you're non-linear like me, you can easily follow a structure to get to a learning outcome. Those are the most important things. I, I was lucky when I was teaching that somehow I managed to work that out to create my own curriculum, but it is uh, for non-linear people, often quite hard to create. Now, Pete, you you want to talk about our wonderful friends in Australia? Um, yeah, I must pop that on now. These uh, this is the Mind Matters Institute dot com. So this is their learning uh, site from their Mind Matters dot me is their main website. Okay, so what we've got here is an eight week reset program. They've just launched this. Uh, you can see here this is using Learn Dash LMS. You've got the course includes eight lessons there. I'm not enrolled. The course, the course is currently closed. If it was open to the public and you could purchase it, it would have a buy now button or an enroll button and you would be able to purchase it. You can see there we're talking about the delivery and here we get into the course content. So you've got fine one week, two, week three, week four. All right, so in there you can't see it because I don't have access to it. So that's how we've structured it into weeks. It's very nice and simple. Uh, each week rolls out we're doing a drip feed of this structure um, and so we're utilizing their email uh, database or the email system which uh, is 
uh, active campaign. Active campaign. So some yep. people will use a system like MailChimp or um, however they like to drip feed out that content. So on a Friday, the, that, that program runs out on a Monday morning to help people reset for the week ahead. So on a Friday, they each receive a an email with the new Zoom link of where that um, of where that's going to be held on the Monday morning, so people can sign in and be part of that. But the cool thing is, all of that content is captured and is then housed in that learning platform that Pete's just shown you. Yeah. So Pete, you're going to log in. Uh, I might. I think so. If I can. Um, so when it comes to structuring your content, it's really important to think about. Okay, so here's where I start. Where, where do my people need to end up to have learnt something? What are they going to come out with? I, when I'm creating courses, I've built them for, oh, aside from, from myself and when I was teaching. So I had a performing arts school for 10 years, I believe. And so every term I would have to create the same structure. So I knew by the end of a term, students will have been able to achieve and perform or demonstrate particular goals. Um, so I would start with what I want that picture to look like and then I would break up uh, the, the curriculum for that term into the 10 weeks of skills required to get them to that performance space. So for example, if as a teacher we had a, a theme which might be country music as an example, I knew not only did some kids want to learn how to yodel, which was one skill, <laughs> some kids would learn how to um, sing in harmony depending on their level of progression. And then some children would want to learn more about movement. So I would teach them basic skills in line dancing. And oh. so I would structure um, my content so that at the end of the term, all of my hundred students that I had in my school would be able to demonstrate each of these different uh, different skills that they had learnt throughout the term. And you can't learn it all at once, which is why a progression of learning is so important. So take one action and then break it down in easy to achieve steps. So it could be four weeks or it could be eight weeks. Eight weeks is really good. So Pete, you want to show them in the back end? No. no? Okay. So yeah, structure it simply. And remember too that people can't take in a lot of information all at the same time. So it's really important to give people bite-sized chunks. Um, oh, oh, that was so nice. So, um, thank you for your, um, for your, oh, we got trolled today, Pete. How oh, beautiful. Awesome. I love that. Um, okay, so um, next step. Next step. We've talked about no. structure, and by the way, if you need a hand with that, why don't you get why don't you get um, get in touch with us, and um, we're more than happy to do that. Um, help you out there. Right, here we go. So now I've logged in to the eight week reset program. So we're going through. You start there, week one. You can see we're drip feeding it out. The next one will be available on April the fourteenth, twenty first, twenty eighth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we come in here into the first one which is the first week and you've got some content in there you can add lots of content and we've got our first video so that's pretty much how you can deliver a very very simple so that is a zoom video for members only so I'm not going to play it to you now but that's how you can deliver your content you can see within in this um, you've got a profile I've got um, my account timeline notifications messages groups courses forums etc etc so that's a learning management system where you can keep all the structure all nicely um, laid out to keep people heading through so yeah that's probably all I wanted to talk about there apart from the pricing pricing is going to be interesting what you need to do here's another three steps keep it um, nice and simple do free small large mm. so use your free to pull people in to get them interested in it use your small 47 bucks, 27 bucks, anything like that to get people in there. Do a little mini course to get people interested in what you're doing and who you are and whether they like you. And if they like you, then upsell them to the large. It's, it's the statistics around it. I won't go into too much, but statistics around it are that the people who have purchased your medium sized or your small sized offering are not probably 90% of the people who purchased your bigger offering will have already bought your middle offering and I'm very happy with it. So that's that's Absolutely. why you do it. 
leading them through the sales funnel. So that's really cool. Awesome. Okay, so the third piece that we want to talk about is your content. So there's all sorts of types of content that you can use. Uh, video content works extremely well. You can create your content using a Zoom call, which is something that we, we've mentioned, or a Skype call, so long as the people that are joining that call are aware that you are recording that for use for educational purposes. It's always good to disclaim that. Um, the next thing that you want to consider is the written content around that. So people learn in lots of different ways. There's auditory, which is people love to listen to uh, audio tracks. There's uh, uh, visual. So there's two types of visual learners. There's visual lingual and and visual uh, spatial. One means, uh, visual linguistic I should say. One means they want to read the words and then the other is that they want to watch the video to learn. Um, so, and then the final one is people like me who are kinesthetic learners and I just want to do quizzes and touch everything <laughs> and click on buttons. Absolutely. So it's really important to mix up your information. So Pete, do you want to speak into that a little bit more? Uh, yes, the um, different types of information. Obviously, I just showed you a, you know, we're using here. There's a little bit of reading to do there, not much, and a lot of video there. That's because the uh, rollout of this content is actually more around um, a, an exercise that you actually do while you're watching the video. So that's, you know, so you've got to think, again, the content, the way you structure your content, or not structure, but the way you form your content, and the delivery of it is around about your learners. So um, think about them. So definitely think about the three different ways that people need, as Monique just said, to interact with your site. So mm -hmm. some people like me actually want to read it. Believe it or not, I will read a blog rather than watch a video. Um, as long as the blog's got bits and pieces out of the, the video in it, like if it's a screenshot, if I'm uh, trying to learn something new, I need to see a screenshot and then read the instructions. So um, think about me type of learner and then think about Monique, give her a quiz, give her things to do, give her an exercise, Absolutely. give her a download to fill in, to write in and maybe upload um, something, you know, if she needs to do an assignment or an assessment and then upload it back to you so that she can interact with you. So keep that going. Think about keeping your um, all of your learners engaged throughout the weeks. Um, think about by week three, Week four, they're starting. It's like a gym membership, basically. Treat it like a gym membership. They all turn up for the first two sessions and then they just start to drip off and just not turn up. You've got to, around about week three or four, get them back engaged with a new type of bit of content and new everything. And you've talked about email rollout. Yep. Um, already, but yeah, just, just keep people touched with an email coming through. Don't swamp them. Don't give them an email every day, but just, just remind them of what's going on. I think one of the... One of the courses that I did um, for uh, vidIQ, which is another tool we use, vidIQ.com, um, they just send me a weekly reminder of where I'm up to in the course. They say, hey, you're up to module seven, just reminding you, click here to log in to con continue on. So it's quite nice just to keep that kind of going um, and engage your, your learners Absolutely. on the way through. So Absolutely. Yeah, and, and always give value. It just really comes down to it. Yes, if you're going to start an online course, we've talked today about thinking about platform. We've talked about the structure of what you're doing. We've talked about the content. But at the end of the day, if you're not giving anyone value, um, then you're kind of wasting your time. So give people value because then people will want to get involved and they'll want what you're they'll be picking up what you're putting down. That's Absolutely, what, I totally so. agree. I totally agree. So if you're considering online learning, now's a great time to start. If you have known for a while that you've got knowledge and expertise that can help make people's lives better, share it. Help people out because everybody needs a little bit of a helping hand at the moment. Oh, question from Larry. Are there any apps you can set quizzes up online and have people log in and take them? There's plenty. It depends if you are looking at uh, doing this through your website, so you want to keep people on your website or not. So I've used one called Thrive, which integrates into, uh, or Thrive Architect, which integrates into a WordPress website. Um, there's lots of other things you can use, like there's plenty of them. Survey Monkey. Survey Monkey just comes to mind. It's a great just, one. Um, uh, just pulled up their website there, so that's uh, a good one. Look. Another way to do it is with a Google Doc. Um, you can do it at a Google Form online connected to your Google Docs. You can do it that way if it's nice and simple. Just send, literally just, yeah, send them the link. And um, our, our accountant got all of, we onboarded ourselves 
basically with our accountant through using a series of online quizzes that he sent to us, including being able to take our digital signature office and, and sign us up that way. So yeah, heaps of them, heaps of them. I don't have one off the top of my head that I've, that I've used personally. Um, but yeah, good question. Mm. Good question. Nice to see you um, popping in all the time there, Larry. And um, Roberto's popped in. Oh, yay. Great yeah, to see you guys. Yeah, so very cool. So that's probably us today, really. Think about your platform and your pricing. Think about your structure and basically your pedagogy, how you want to deliver the actual course. And then think about your content and the way you're going to deliver value to everybody. Do you have yeah. anything else to... No, other than, you know, if you're struggling with your online course, I don't know how many I've built now, heaps of them. If we can help, get in touch. This is our email address. Oh, sorry, that's, oh, that's, that's our website. Our, that's our online learning course, which is coming. Absolutely. And Feel free to get in touch with us. You can send me an email as well. This yep. is my email address. And I can literally sit with you and help you work through via a Zoom call how to structure your your uh, online course. Pete can talk to you about the best way to to roll that out or where to, where to house that, I want to say, yeah. host that, yeah. I should say. Yep. And monetize it. And how to monetize. That's, that's a big one too because it's great giving away your knowledge and expertise. But somewhere down the track, you probably want to turn it into money. So And you should. If you're an expert, you should. Cool. All right, time Alrighty. for us to go. Thanks, guys, for popping in. As always, it's a pleasure. I'm Monique Bradley. And I'm Pete Ward. Yeah. This was the Dog and Pony Show for today. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Lovely to have you with us. Take care and we'll see you soon. Awesome.